Hey yo, what's good? What's going on everyone, everywhere? So look, you're new to the game and you don't know what power to pick. Or you've already been playing the game, you should switch some things up. Well, hopefully this video helps you here, okay? Now, before we get into powers per se, I just wanna, you can skip ahead if you want. I just wanna get into membership real quick. Just because DC, as you see right here in the membership, when you get the membership, you have access to all the powers. Now, I'm gonna go over which powers will be limited to if you do not have membership. And if you do have membership, you have all the powers. Now you can buy individual powers if you want, but you might as well just go ahead and get the membership because pretty much a couple dollars more and you have access to all the powers and you can keep that power on that character that you make as long as that character is made and you had it without, within the time of your membership. Now, if your membership expires, you're still able to go to that character, have the power, free reign, all that, but you just can't make any additional character until you upgrade membership or buy the power, okay? Just wanna clarify that real quick. There's other stuff that you can get with membership too, like the little daily rewards. As you see, the members get the bottom, bottom row of stuff. I already collected a lot of this stuff. Well, the free to play players only get top, or the non-member players only get top stuff. And there's normally like every month, there's like a little uh, style that you can get. This time it's Two-Face Inspired Mask, but you get like extra gear, stabilizers, which are just loot box keys. Um, this token, which is basically like a super token that allows you to get some pretty valuable stuff. And fake tokens, which give you like good stuff. And you can get all kinds of other stuff. Ally favor to improve your allies, make them stronger, and the middle to get your artifacts up, which you can look on other videos for that stuff. But in terms of power, since we covered membership, let's go over to a brand new character. Now, I don't have any more character slots, so I'm gonna delete this one right here. Now I kinda like this name, so I'm gonna make sure I keep this. Boomba. Alrighty. So, as you see, we're gonna go over to create a character. And you can watch one of the best openings to a game I've seen yet. It's still amazing. But I'm gonna go ahead and skip it. For those who wanna know what's going on, definitely watch that. It's a very, very good opening, man. It's sick. The Even the art style was amazing. I thought it would be you know, a little bit better in terms of what you go from this, that art style to this. It's like, okay, it's a little different, but pretty similar. But yeah, let me go over and just pick some stuff. Okay, so here we go. Down to the power section of it. Sped through all the other stuff because that's really on you. If you're a new player, all this is saying is magic is pretty much um, if you're a hero is Wonder Woman, if you're a villain sorcery, um, meta, if you're a hero Superman, if you're a villain Lex Luthor, and tech is if you're a hero, you're Batman, is your mentor, and if you're a villain, it's the Joker. So I normally go with tech, that's a better option out of all these, in my opinion. What I like at least. You know, it just allows you to choose a more personality, which is just how you stand when you're not in a movement speed. Okay. Just however you want to be, you're, you're more out of hero villain. Now this kind of does matter just because the hero side is larger than the villain side, but since we do have the House of Legends with the shared space, you're able to enter the going now. And when you sign up to do activities, and, con and content or able, sorry, my dog's going crazy in back. When you sign up for our activities and content, you're able to go ahead and be together in the content, but you just can't initially make a group with the hero and villain together. Now, in terms of power, this is another thing that matters. Um, the mentor doesn't really matter, just the first couple of missions and the last missions that you'll do when leveling up. Other than that, it has no effect on you whatsoever at all, just so you're aware. In terms of powers, the classic ones that you get for free will be nature, sorcery, mental, ice, fire, 
and gadgets. Now, ones that you have to pay for, either by way of membership, you'll get access to all of the powers with any membership that you get for that time that you have the membership active, or you can buy them individually. You have light, which is pretty much a Green Lantern for light. You have electricity, you have earth, you have quantum, you have celestial, you have rage, you have munitions, you have atomic, and you have water. Okay, now water, think of Aquaman or Aqualad from Young Justice, like the little water constructs, the water sorcery kind of stuff, all that good stuff. Okay, atomic, think of, I forget his name, Captain Adam, I believe, and um, Firestorm, mostly Firestorm. Munitions, think of Rambo, pretty much, just Rambo. Rage, it's a Red Lantern, pretty much plain and simple. Celestial, think of Spectre or um, Eclipso from DC Comics. Quantum, think of, I forget his name. It's like Force or something. I forget his name, but I think it's Captain, is it Captain Adam? He like has control, he has like the little suit thing. He's very powerful. Pretty much deals with like time and space and all that. Earth, come on now. You're pretty much Earthbender. Think of Toph from Avatar. Electricity, think of Black Lightning or Static Shock. And you know, light, come on now. Green Lantern. Gadgets, more like Batman. Fire, pretty, pretty self-explanatory is fire. Like you, you can control fire. Ice is ice, like the opposite of fire, pretty much. Mental, think of like telepaths and Jean Grey, uh, Psych from Young Justice, stuff like that. Sorcery, think of all the magic characters, Satana, Cersei, etc. Dr. Fate. In nature, think of Beast Boy, pretty much, or Poison Ivy. Either one, because you're able to shapeshift with this, okay? Now, in terms of what to choose, if you are going to choose power. I would definitely see what are you going to choose in terms of your support role. Are you going to be a healer, which you heal the group and you make sure everyone stays alive, especially your tank? Are you going to be a tank, which you take all the damage for your group and you make sure that you're fighting the the boss or the, the enemies in front, you know, pretty much all up in their face, being like, hey, hit me, hit me, don't hit them. And if they try to hit them, you pull them back over and you make sure they hit you, kind of deal. Or you controller, which you're more like, as self-explanatory with the name, you're controlling the field and doing all the mechanics of everything that's going around you, etc. Now I will say, if you're trying to get an easier, like, into groups, healer is a thing that you can pretty much, if you can get the timing down, it's very easy to just be in a group, get to elite raids, which are like the higher hardcore level of raids and get up pretty easily and fast. If you're gonna get picked up very quickly, be a tank. Cause there's not a lot of tanks and yeah. Pretty much any support role will get you picked up pretty quick in groups that people are people are making. Um, but tanks are generally like, a lot of people have trouble finding tanks just cause there's not a lot of people that are tanks and people that are tanks like being other characters, et cetera, et cetera, okay? But in terms of your classic powers, if you are a healer, I will recommend that you probably just go ahead and go sorcery. Sorcery is pretty like good reliable power. It's also a pet power. So when, especially on your damage side, I'll do more pet pet abilities on the damage side because that's where it pays off more. Healing side is pretty inconsistent, just in my opinion, from my testing. But healing side is pretty straightforward. You got a little bit of heal over time, and then you do burst heals here and there. Now nature is just pretty much all heal over time and you can speed up the healing over time, which can be very powerful, you know, how to use it, but due to all the transformations and whatnot and nature getting nerfed a while back, it's not in the same height as it used to be. It pretty much needs to do the transformations now to stay relevant or to succeed. But sorcerer probably your way to go in terms of healing abilities for the classic power set that is free for everyone, okay? Now, in terms of your controllers, you have gadgets as an option or mental as an option. And now, 
if it's just this, you're doing free to play powers only, I would go gadgets. Cause gadgets, everyone loves the good gadgets, okay? Gadgets in terms of damage is ludicrously stupid. It's one of the most, like if you know how to use it, it's one of the most OP powers in terms of damage. That's just cause of how it's set up and what you can do. Cause you can do a lot of clipping, which is basically you clip the animation of what you're doing and you're able to basically spam out a lot of powers and unique variety of sequences, etc. Okay. Now these both gadgets and mental, you can technically turn invisible. So keep that in mind. And with invisibility comes off one of the loadout of powers. So keep that in mind. I would definitely recommend gadgets over mental just because it's stronger and it's damage, generally speaking. Now, DC is in a good, good spot where pretty much all of the powers can beat or come up with each other, can compete on the level with each other in terms of damage. But I would just say, generally speaking, gadgets normally comes out on top whenever you do competitions with other people. But it has been beaten several times. I beat catches plenty of times as well. So keep that in mind. Now, in terms of tanks, you get fire and ice. So I generally like to go fire more. You're able to heal yourself as the tank and DPS. Um, and as you know, your fire, you deal with damage over time because you're burning people. And it's very strong. It's very strong single target. Um, pretty decent like area effects so AOE and as a tank you're able to put your health incredibly high like fire tanks in a way where you able to heal yourself yes but also build up your health pool to an insane amount higher than anyone will be able to achieve and on the other hand, ice, you deal more defense. So you got a lot of shields when you're tanking. And if you haven't checked out Hezzy's video, he made a video when he turned ice, he's hitting very high numbers of ice. So ice is definitely something to take in consideration now. I don't like to go fire more, but that's just me. Um, ice is pretty much like a, a pretty mirrored thing because they have even share some of the same powers. Like there's a fire burst that you can like wind up like a Kame Kame Ha blast that both fire and ice both share. There's some massive attacks that they pretty much share the same thing. I pretty much mirror images of one another in certain regards. But I would say for most people, I will go ahead and choose fire um, over ice, just in terms of fun, playability, all that. Now, if you want to go your a safer bet, I would definitely choose ice as a safer bet, just because it does have so many shields that you can just hide behind shields all day long and you pretty much won't die. Unless you're fighting something insanely higher level than you. When I mean insanely higher level, like if you're a level one and you're trying to go fight level 30, it's not gonna work out for you. None of these powers will help you in that scenario. But if you're level 20, you know, 28 and trying to find level 30, ice can be a good way to go because you're able to survive with all them shields. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now, if you're going to go ahead and get membership or spend money to buy these powers, I would definitely, definitely change up my recommendations, okay? I like the more ease of use powers, especially recommend to most people. You can watch, I think it's like an hour long video. I mean, telling my homeboy which powers I went over, etc. Okay, what side of the good and easier tier to master and control over others, okay? One of my personal favorite all time powers, electricity. So I'm gonna be a little biased towards it. When it comes to the healing, if you get all the powers, right? You have nature as a healer ability. You have sorcery as a healer ability or power set, I should say. You have electricity as a healer, healer power set. You have celestial as a healer power set. And you have water as a healer power set. Now, if you want to go more support role based, water is probably the best healer in the game. It's one of the easier healer to do and it's insanely powerful healing wise. Now, it does lack some in the damage um, space if you are just trying to go strictly water-based abilities but you have movement you know super speed is one of the best movements in the game in terms of damage that you can do with it 
um, and iconic powers as well that can help make water be a lot better in the damage side of things. Celestial, it's probably the second, it's definitely top three um, for most people and in my list including. Um, it deals with a lot of combo attacks, as you see. So when you hit something, you have to press like a sequence of buttons to combo into another variant of that power to increase the power, um, you know, damage or healing efficiency, stuff like that. Okay, it has like little extra perks to it, which is very helpful. It's a very powerful power set, both on the healing side and the damage side. It's very all around power. That's very good. It's definitely in the top three, okay? I can probably say on, on both sides. Definitely top three healer for sure. Probably like top five damage. Depending on who's using it. Electricity. Electricity is one of the top damage powers in the game. Healing wise, I would say it's probably in that top three as well. Just me personally. Just because if you can get the timing down of the heals on the healer side of things, you can do very well with this. Electricity, if you don't know, is very burst healing. It's not like healing over time a lot because the healing over time abilities either have a very short range or not very good to sustain the amount of healing that you need, like all the other powers have pretty much, right? So to make up for it, it has a lot of burst heals. So stuff that other power set can't heal as high, say if you need 50,000 health, electricity can heal you to hold 50,000 in one power. Well, other powers will only heal you like 20 or 30 or even get closer to the higher amount, but they won't be able to consistently do that. While electricity, you're able to consistently hit the higher numbers back to back to back to back to back because pretty much majority of it, it just burst. Okay. So I would recommend that ease of use and to learn the game first power out the gate or just a nice variety electricity is definitely a healer power set that you want to try out or water is definitely a healer set that you want to try out water does have some combo um, abilities but not much and it has some nice power interactions within itself okay that's definitely something that i would definitely recommend that you go ahead and try it's a nice fun power set to explore on if you're trying to get into healing now, in terms of controllers, controllers, munitions is pretty much the way to go. Munitions, very reliable power. Um, you can do a close range, long range, medium range, whatever. It's very reliable, very high damage. One of the best damaging powers in the game. Very reliably with damage power in the game. Controller is very reliable there. It's very easy. If you want a power that's pretty much so powerful that it makes it easy and almost some people say even boring at times because everything is just so easy to you to do munitions way to go it's a very powerful power set okay i will still recommend um gadgets if you are willing to do a little bit of a learning curve because you will have to balance different loadouts and um the clipping aspect of this game but if you just want straight, you hit a button, it does damage. That's all you gotta worry about. You don't gotta worry about no clipping animations and this and the third. Munitions way to go. All right. That'll be my recommendation there. Those are the highest two out of the controller power sets. Now in terms of tanking, tanking, rage is always a excellent, excellent tank to have. No one really complains about rage being a tank unless you just don't know how to deal with your rage crash which is basically as rage you can have a mode that you go into where you're ba basically able to not only heal yourself of a lot of damage but allow the healer to heal you and your health gets amplified similar to fi fire where your health pool gets bigger and bigger you're able to heal yourself as you take damage and you're pretty much very self-sufficient because whatever damage you will take you will be able to heal yourself with a slight delay that amount of damage within your mode being activated but at the end of your mode all the damage will come rushing back to you if you do not cancel it out okay so basically cleanse yourself off before you take all that damage 
Now, if you don't get the timing of the cleanse, you will die pretty much, more than likely, depending on how much damage you took. Um, but if you're able to cleanse yourself, it's a very easy, self-sufficient power that people have enjoyed and loved. In terms of the damage side of things, it's insane. If you're close range, it's almost unmatched. A lot of people, it can it can shoot for a number one spot in a lot of people's lists. Um, so definitely be careful. It gives gadgets a run for its money if it's melee range, you know, close range, but it's far away, it kind of lacks a little bit. So definitely keep that in mind. That would be one of my recommendations. I would still probably go with fire as my other recommendation or ice, either one, however you want to play it. Um, I generally like fire more just because there's an, um, an iconic ability, which is Superman's heat vision, right? And you can pair it with some other um, artifact that can increase it, enhance it, and make it a lot better, as opposed to ice that you don't have the luxury of using the heat vision that actually combos and applies a nice power action for us your powers to increase your powers damage okay so keep that in mind that's why i recommend fire a little bit more and is a pretty pretty much a little bit easier because with ice you have to definitely get the timing of your shields and sometimes if your shield doesn't display properly you can be misled to either use a shield too early or too late okay but with fire you're just looking at your health bar pretty much okay so that is my recommendation thus far for the right now in the state of the game, how it is. Um, Earth, you know what? I'll give a third recommendation for each one. For healers, the third one will probably be, in all honesty, Celestial, probably the, the third, my third recommendation for healers. For controllers, my third one would be, let me see. Third one might be Quantum. Um, it's pretty good and, and very beautiful looking power set. Um, if you want more complexity that can pay off in the long run, Hard Light's a great place to go. Um, mental, you can do a lot of stuff with too. It's very good, like gadget. Um, you just gotta know how to work it. Not a lot of people know how to work it, so it kinda becomes average, middle of the road. But you know how to work it, you can become very high level on it, okay? In terms of, you know, people starting out, probably just quantum would probably be the better way to go. Okay, that's my third recommendation for the third place recommendation for controllers. Now, in terms of tank, I would definitely recommend uh, Earth. Where'd it go? Earth is a fantastic tank right now. It does insane amount of damage. One of the best damaging powers right now. I say that a lot because depending on who you ask and who you're playing with and who's in control of this power, you can be at the top DPS when you do like different DPS competitions if you're into that, okay? Earth does have one of the best superchargers in the game that hits the hardest in the entire game. So it's definitely nothing to play with. Um, you can have pets that can actually take damage for you or deal damage out. So it's definitely like something to take into consideration. Um, I might even, depending on you and your playstyle, I might even rank this a little bit above fire, but I might actually do that more than rage, actually. Hmm. Now that I think about it, huh. I don't know. So I was able to say top three. Apologies, y'all. Someone's calling. Give me a call right now. But top three is definitely Earth, Rage, and Fire. Pick however you want to do it. And from there, um, Fire is good single target. Earth good all around. And Rage, and for the damage side of things, is good up close and personal. Okay? Um, rage is pretty self-sufficient tank that you can get it to out the get-go when you're tanking. And fire can be self-sufficient if you have your right build set up and earth can get to a self-sufficient point but it takes more into it to get to that point pretty much okay 
But that's all I got. Let me go ahead and take this call. Let me get off here. So peace and shalom to everyone everywhere. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Like the video if you like this kind of content or if this was helpful for you. All right. Without further ado, y'all, y'all be safe. Y'all be easy. Shalom.